Good afternoon. So today at outdoor school, I've done, I did something or had something happen that I have not only not experienced in the last four years of teaching outdoor school or attending outdoor school as a teacher, but also has not happened to me in my life in over 15 years. That's a safe estimate because I can't can't pinpoint the exact date. I know it's happened before and I know it's been more than 15 years. It It may have actually been more than 20 years since this has happened to me. I got a bee sting and you can't even hardly see it anymore. There you go. Right there. That's the bee sting. And I'm not saying that to draw attention to myself like, oh, boo-hoo, poor Ben. No. But, um, I haven't had a bee sting in a while. I've had shots, you know, injections, and, uh, same, same concept, but nothing really hurt. (laughs) Like, it stung me, and I was like, oh, that's not right. I thought maybe I had scraped my arm on, like, the zipper of my sweatshirt or something. No, I looked down and there's a bee stuck to me. So I flicked them uh, to go away. And uh, then my arm just started really hurting and burning. And, you know, it got all red, puffed up for a little while, and it, you know, it goes away. But I can understand why the kids run from bees. I can't really understand why they run if they've never been stung. But if you have been stung, you know it hurts. But like I said, it's been between 15 and 20 years since I've been stung by a bee, uh, or stung at all by, by anything. And it takes a little bit to be reminded of uh, how much it hurts. But don't worry, I'm not allergic to bees. Didn't have a my girl situation or anything like that. Um, just, you know, the sight, the sting sight got a little puffy and then went away. Still a little tender, uh, but uh, the stinger is not in there anymore. It's gone. It's good. We're safe. And, uh, yeah, but that got me thinking, why don't I share with the mountains of people that are watching this video some interesting facts about bees, some things to remember. So, I did did steal some information. This is not my, my information, but it is knowledgeable, and we'll just we'll run through these topics, some things that we may or may not know about bees. One. There are 16,000 species of bee. Most are solitary insects. Only about 5% are social bees. And the most common is the honeybee. As many as 80,000 of them colonize in a single hive. Can you imagine sharing a house with 80,000 people or 79,999 other individuals? And be, I mean, I can't share a space with hardly like 30 individuals. Just like, I, I don't deal well with crowds. But to share the same space with 80,000 people or 80,000 other beings is just crazy. These are bees, obviously, they're much smaller. But still, the concept is the same. Uh, number two. Drones, which are the male honeybees, live only for mating with the queen. That is their sole job is to mate with the queen. Uh, if there's a shortage of food in the hive, the workers kick their uh, kick the drones out. Um, so if if food production is going down, then the uh, for lack of a better term, the gigolo bees get kicked out of the house. It's like, hey, you're not you're not doing anything helpful, so uh, we'll see you later. You can come back when we need more workers. Uh, so that's that's kind of funny. Number three, uh, when the drones mate, they die afterward from a ruptured abdomen. Their belly explodes. Um, yeah, it, well, their reproductive organ is detached <laughs> and gets stuck inside the queen, which then causes their abdomen to explode as a result. So, you know, ow, 
<laughs> um, the queen will continue to mate. This is kind of moving on to number four. The queen will continue to mate. The drones are not terribly smart. So until she collects enough reproductive cells from more than 70 million multiple mates, the queen will keep going. So these guys aren't catching on apparently. Like, hey, that guy just died after he did his job. Guess it's my turn. <laughs> yep, that's fun. Uh, number five. The queen was actually known as the king until the late 1660s when there was a Dutch scientist uh, who dissected the hive's big bee and discovered ovaries. So they actually, there was a common understanding that it was actually a dude that was in charge until this guy named Jan, or Jan, I guess, he's Dutch, Jan Swammerdam. That's a name. Jan Swammerdam uh, discovered the ovaries in the hive coordinator, the, uh, the queen, as it is now referred to. So, only, uh, what? Between 300 and 400 years that uh, the queen has been the queen and used to be the king. It's fun to know. Uh, number six. Australian researchers discovered that honeybees can distinguish human faces. The insects were th shown black and white pictures and given treats for the right answer. So, bees know who they're looking for. Maybe that's why. Well, if that's the case, then this bee should not have stung me today. Because I was defending him. It. The students were screaming and yelling and running. And I said, hey, if you don't bother him, he won't bother you. And he stings me. Now I know that bee was out to get me. Um. Uh, number seven. In the Stealthy Insect Sensor Project, some scientists in Los Alamos have trained bees to recognize explosives. Don't know how applicable that is. I know we have bomb sniffing dogs and drug sniffing dogs, but bomb sniffing bees? I guess that's good if somebody tries to blow up their hive. That's cool. Um, the term honeymoon, this is number eight. The term honeymoon is derived from an old Northern European custom in which newlyweds would consume a daily cup of mead made with fermented honey for a month. So, you know, moon being from new moon to new moon, 28 days. Um, so that's the moon part, and then honey being the uh, the fermented honey, honey in this drink that newlywed couples would drink together. Interesting. Now we just go on vacation. Uh, number nine. <laughs> no, back to number eight. So it'd be, be a lot cheaper. Just buy a month's worth of mead and put some honey in it. Uh, be way cheaper than taking a cruise to the Bahamas, I'll tell you that much. By the end of the month, you might have enjoyed it just as much, too. Who knows? Month-long honeymoon. Some people do that. Month-long honeymoon. Good for them. Number nine. The term bee's knees was coined by an American cartoonist named Tad Dorgan, who is also responsible for the phrase the cat's pajamas, the flea's eyebrows, the canary's tusks. And apparently, uh, yes, we have no bananas. I don't know. I think that's a song. Um, so I don't know if that's a phrase or a term that people use. Yes, we have no bananas. I don't know. Look it up. Uh, number 10. During World War I, honey was used to treat the wounds of soldiers because it attracts and absorbs moisture, making it a valuable healing agent. So I guess the bees are being nice to you, because if they sting you, then you can use their honey to make it feel better. But they caused you the pain in the first place, so weigh your options, I guess. Number 11, honey never spoils ever. 
Yes, it may get a little gritty. It may get that weird consistency, but it never goes bad. Um, fun fact, sugar doesn't spoil either unless it gets wet. So keep that one in mind. Um, and honey is you know, primarily sugar anyway, so take that for what it's worth. Number 12, bumblebees can estimate time intervals. Researchers have found that insects that the insects extend their tongues in tandem with the rhythm of a sweet reward. This aids in the hunt for nectar, whose availability waxes and wanes means gets better or worse depending on uh, the seasons, obviously. Sometimes we have more nectar because there are more flowers. Other times we don't. Um, so, I guess, great. <laughs> Bumblebees have rhythm. We knew that if you've ever watched the uh, Magic School Bus. They do a whole episode on how bees dance to communicate. Alright, this next one's going to be fun. I can't read this word. Number 13. Uh, Melitosphex bermensis. Recently found preserved in amber in a mine in northern Myanmar is the oldest bee known. It lived a hundred million years ago. So I guess that's the, the genus and species of a, of a certain bee. Melitosphex bermensis. If nothing else, you learn a new word. Melitosphex. That's a fun Melitosphex. Try saying it. Go ahead. Yeah, see, it's fun. Number 14. After he had pioneers the laws of genetics of pea plants. Austrian monk Gregor Mendel bred a strain of hybrid bees. Unfortunately, they were so vicious he had to kill them. So, sorry, Gregor. Um, I wonder what they were a hybrid of. Like, just multiple species of bee? Or, like mixed with housefly who knows number 15 the buzz you hear when a bee approaches is the sound of its four wings moving at 11,400 strokes per minute and bees can fly at an average of 15 miles per hour so you gotta run pretty fast to avoid a bee ouch um 11,400 strokes per minute. Can you imagine? Like, even if you just had to tap your finger 11,400 times in a minute. That's what it means. And it's got four wings, so... Who knows? Uh, 16. Nope. Yep, 16. The newly hatched queen immediately kills all the other hatched and unhatched queens in the hive. So the fastest queen to get out of the larva stage uh, gets to kill all the competition. I don't know if that's a fair fight. Uh, 17. The Honey Boogie. In 1943. Oh, wow. This is going to be fun. Alright, hang on. Okay, so I'm going to pause the B facts for a second. Because I am stuck in traffic at a construction zone on the interstate. Now, construction on the interstate is annoying anyway. But what makes this more annoying is that it's literally just a quarter mile, like less than a quarter mile of construction. They close one lane for less than a quarter of a mile. And yes, the speed gets down to like 45 miles per hour when you're crossing, like passing right in front of the, the workers. So I get that we can go a little slower. But there's no reason for me to be at a full stop on the interstate. It's not like a big construction site. Like I don't understand why traffic has to back up. Like, get into the lane that's not closed and drive. A bee can figure it out. Goodness gracious. All right, we'll continue in just a second. So another fun fact, it says speed limit 45, which means you're allowed to go 45 miles per hour. They're equipped for that. I'm traveling at 15, so a bee could fly as fast as I'm going right now on the interstate. 
I just entered the construction section, by the way. And in about 12 seconds, I'm gonna be passing the workers. Again, going 15 miles per hour. So, passing. There's the workers. Hi, guys. All right. And through the construction. You see how short that was? Literally doesn't take, I mean, at 15, 20 miles an hour, it takes about a, less than a minute to get through the section. And we had to stop traffic for it. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, moving on. In 1943, an Australian zoologist named Carl von Frisch, Frisch, I don't know, published a study on the dances the bees perform to alert their fellow workers. If they dance in a round pattern, it means their food is close. If they dance in a waggle pattern, it is, means that the food is far away. Again, Magic School Bus. Search it up. Talks all about it. Number 18. Worker bees have strictly regimented roles within the hive, including that of undertakers who drag their dead siblings from the hive. So any dead bees? So that queen? Now, this is a good question. So the queen kills all the other hatched queens, plus all the unhatched queens, well, these worker bees have to drag out their dead siblings, but technically, the queens wouldn't be their siblings, they'd be their moms? Ooh, bee families are dysfunctional. Okay. Uh, number 19, only two more left. Almost done. It's a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Number 19, on it. The April 1984 Challenger flight, there were 3,300 bees housed in a special confining box, and they actually adapted perfectly to the zero gravity situation and built a nearly normal comb, honeycomb, but they didn't go to the bathroom. Since bees excrete only outside the hive, they held it in for seven days because they couldn't leave the hive, they were confined to it. And uh, a NASA spokesperson said the space hive was just as clean as a pin. That's a quote. I don't know how clean pins usually are, but uh, awesome. Number 20, last one. According to an old wives' tale, all these are great. A bee entering your house means a visitor is on its way or on their way. And if you kill the bee, the visitor will not be a pleasant one. So, uh... Any un unexpected bees, uh, invite them in for uh, a snack, I guess. I wouldn't serve them honey, though. No, I would not, too. They probably wouldn't like that very much. All right, that's all I have to say about bees. Um, like I said, my arm is feeling just fine. No difficulty breathing, no puffiness, no swelling. So uh, I'll see you tomorrow.